How am I working towards finding peace in a body that people tell me I'm not worthy of existing in? Yeah. And people can say all day that that's someone else's insecurity and it's not about, but it is, it is a microaggression. And people need to be aware of what they say and how they say it and who they say it to. Because when you purposely come up to fat girls and you make a moralizing food comment, yeah, <laughs> we're going to receive it, especially if you're a thin bodied person coming up to us and trying to relate to us through that. I guess that's like their N word almost, right? Like, <laughs> I, guess, I guess this is like the, the fat equivalence of the N word is like, don't come up and tell me that my dietary choices are incorrect, even though I'm literally 400 pounds and I can't get up off this chair. And my, you know, like I'm actively struggling right now because these armrests are digging into my waistline. I, it, it is what it is. These, these, these fat acceptance podcasts though, are some of the most hilarious things I've ever, I've ever witnessed. I have tried to put some time into watching a full one. It is almost impossible, dude. Some of these people are so main character syndrome. It is insane. Like you give two or three people on a panel time to talk. One of them will completely eat up the time period. And the other two people, I don't know, like they're just so incredibly passive that they'll just let that other person talk for presumably an hour or maybe even more depending on how long that that time period for the podcast is and it's uh agonizing because like most of the time they don't even talk about what's actually there or they're just sitting there telling you how incredibly impoverished they are while being the most impoverished person on the entire planet given the fact that you're 400 pounds like pounds like you're literally telling me how terrible it is to be this size while you got to that size yourself you are so you are, you are in the most privileged time period ever and yet here you are still complaining about stuff when you are the one that did it but uh we're gonna get into it today we're gonna we're gonna watch some of these fat acceptance podcasts they are very enlightening experiences and the cringe level is dramatic it is actually od some might say so we're gonna start watching this dude and uh hear why they think that this is like the n-word for them dude yeah that's embodied person coming up to us and trying to relate to us through yeah so like a white person walk up to a black guy going like you, you know you're you know, like just basically saying that. And, you know, my opinion on it is, uh, you know, hey, dude, there are times where words are going to hurt more depending on the person that you say it to. So, for instance, if you came up to me and were like, you, you're just gay, you're really gay. I wouldn't really it wouldn't really apply to me because obviously I don't indulge in the male genitalia. I find women more attractive than anything. And I think women are delicate, amazing, beautiful creatures that I would invest all of my penile function to never men. But. The point I'm making is if I was gay and you were using it as a negative context, like saying that it was bad, obviously I would find offense to it. And, you know, in general, saying something in that particular fashion would be just generally offensive because you're using it in an offensive way, right? If you're just saying a word like, oh, yeah, that dude is gay and you were just using it as like a descriptor, it's okay. Like, it's fine. It's like, that's true. That guy is gay. I've seen him suck four guys off one time. That's true. But – uh, if you're using it in a negative context, naturally, that's going to be perceived as, as a negative thing. So, yeah, but the issue, like, oftentimes for these people is, like, they're not – they're seeing it as a negative thing when in reality it could just be, like, if your grandma comes up to you and goes, Oh, honey, are you sure you want to eat 14 hot dogs? You've already had 17. It's, it seems a little bit much. I don't even know if I've eaten any yet today. Like, if that's something that's happening, I don't think grandma is being mean to you. I just think that maybe she's concerned that your arteries are imploding. So it's something that I feel like context matters naturally when you say anything. And some people can say certain things that other people can't say and vice versa. Like, for instance, a guy like Alex Jones can say that Sandy Hook wasn't real and he'll get punished for it naturally because that's crazy. But if I said it and I said it to like my group, my friends, Nothing would happen because, you know, like what? I don't have that much value to my speech in that setting. It does matter how you say things. It does matter where you say these things. I'm an obvious advocate for, spe for free speech, but it's very ignorant for me to not acknowledge that the way you say words or how you say words or what words you're saying, depending on where you are, you will suffer consequences for that. Like I'm all for if you want to say the N word. You can go ahead and say it. Like, I don't, I don't care personally. I know there, there are a lot of people that go, David, this person is such a bad person because they said the N-word. I always go, I don't care. Like, it, it just depends on how they're saying it. If they're saying it in a racist, uh, a racial term, like a, way, a racist way, all right, that's different. Like, it's, not, it's, less about the, it's less about the word they used and more about the intention at which they use the word. You understand? If you're just saying the N-word 
and you're just saying it to be edgy or you're just saying it just because it's like a you're reading it somewhere or you just want to say it just to say it i don't care like honestly speaking it, it's like the lowest whatever at that point right now if you said it in a group of black guys and those black guys were feeling some type of way about it that's up to you yeah you know what i'm saying like I'm, I'm gonna leave it up to you to discern when when and where you can say certain things and i hope you make the right decision that yeah that's the only thing you're saying to us is that yeah well, i don't know if it's the only thing we're saying to you guys like i would say i would say some other things obviously like oh wow your forehead is looking smaller today it's good but make sure we're earning it you know that is a microaggression and it i, I don't uh, these people man i don't know if they got like ep ep it, it seems like in academia we've had like new words like it seems like new words pop up every few years so like microaggression is not a word i'm traditionally used to hearing because people in the real world don't use words like microaggression because it just doesn't come up but i understand like what microaggressions are it's like basically like you're like passively trying to offend somebody but not in a very direct way and it's also like something that you would just generally say in in, in, in just general because you don't actually think of it as a bad thing but it is a bad thing because you're offending somebody technically so yes i get it but uh dude this like academic brain these people have dude like you go to college you're gonna hear these words but once you get out of college nobody says that shit made us uncomfortable yeah but so what dude so you're gonna be uncomfortable there are gonna be moments in your life where things are gonna happen and you're gonna be uncomfortable and i understand that you don't want to be uncomfortable it's probably optimal to be as uncomfortable it's probably optimal to be as un uncomfortable as possible sure but there are gonna be moments where you're gonna have to be uncomfortable and it's really optimal to have the ability to transcend that to be able to like ride through it right and for these people for some reason they always go to it's offensive you shouldn't be saying this stuff it's like always trying to dictate speech and i love it you know i, I really love it dude because these people uh they have the monopoly on what they can say and how they want those words to be perceived and yet sitting here telling me or you that you can't say certain things because it might offend you dude grow the fuck up okay like people are gonna say things that are gonna be disrespectful to you you know what you do and walk away i don't know what else to say than that dude shrug it off right like of course we felt like <laughs> fucked <laughs> time to go <laughs> all right then leave bro i don't even know why that's even funny so like you're telling me you showed up to like a barbecue and you ate 14 cheeseburgers and your grandmother told you that that was a little bit too much and you just walked out i guess sure i mean good i don't want you here anyway bro you're breaking the chairs these lawn chairs are not supposed to hold up 400 pounds so thank you you're actually helping us out you actually ate half of the cheeseburgers and they weren't even cooked yet right we did um leave. and so it's <laughs> it's not but can, but can you imagine taking offense to it because like okay the entire purpose of a microaggression is to i'm i'm pretty sure is it's happening unintentionally like they're not doing it with the purpose of harming you they're just act they're just do saying something that would be perceived as negative even though you didn't know it would be perceived as negative right it's like being in a friend like a group of people and be like yo bro damn bro she was fat and then your fat friend's like you know it's like you didn't mean to offend your fat friend but you said you know like it is what it is right or it's like saying dude my you know if you got if you got a small meat dude if you got six inches and then most of the guys are gonna look down like six inches is small it's a microaggression right uh, I believe that it's like un the unintentional aspect of it. So if you're getting offended by somebody that didn't even know that they were offending you or they did it by accident or even if they did it intentionally, you leaving the environment for that is very, very, very unstable of you, dude. It's just like I feel like so many times I hear these people say stuff and I just think I don't know if you're actually an adult, dude. Like <laughs> what do you do when you're in like any scenario ever when something happens that you don't like? Would you just run away? Like the conflict evasion is like on 10 dude what what is that skill like what how did you get that skill bro you just have to go away from every situation including when somebody says something that wasn't even intentional you couldn't give you couldn't give grandma the benefit of the doubt A welcoming language yeah and, what and I, I would need to know an example bro i would really need to know an example of what they're talking about right we did this. um and so it's <laughs> it's not welcoming language yeah and and i and there's a part of me that can go back to my logical side and say and women We've really been taught to relate to each other through diet culture. What, dude? Man, this is some weird, like, fat acceptance brain they got on right now, dude. I, I think that if you're going to say a, a claim like that, like, oh, this person, like, talked about what I ate and it was a microaggression, so I had to leave. I'm going to need, I'm, can you ground that out with an example? Like, can you tell me what you mean by that? How exactly that would would have occurred and what the, what the scenario was? Because it's too easy for people to say, 
oh, this is bad. And then you go, okay, like, but can you explain that? Because, like, that's a very ambiguous statement. Like, you know, somebody talking about the things that you're eating. Can you go into that? Because, like, I don't know what that exactly means. And, of course, you can go, what do you mean you don't know what that means, David? Like, if they're talking about eat, they're talking about somebody walking up and critiquing their food. No, that's not exactly what they're saying. They're talking about somebody going up to their food with a microaggression, meaning, like, it was passive. It wasn't even something that they meant to do to offend them or anything like that. So it could literally just have been, like, a passing by comment of, like, like the cheese, huh? Yeah, good cheese is good. And then that could have been easily, like, the, the, the straw that broke the camel's back and then forced them to leave or whatever. Like, I don't know. I'm going to need to know examples. That's why if you ever see me talking about stuff, I'm always going to ground it with examples because then you can actually understand what I'm talking about. I, get, I, I give you an understanding of what it is. Too easy for these people to just go, this is happening. No example at all, dude. And just left there like, okay, bro. So I didn't say, man, women... We've really been taught to relate to each other through diet culture. I don't back know about away that. from thinking this woman has bad thoughts of us as fat people. I don't think she has bad thoughts of us as fat people. I think she was kind in her tone. I think she thought that was the way to relate to us. Yeah, so that's exactly what I thought. It's just passive comments, like passive comments that somebody thought was just like normal talk for most people. But you got like weird fat acceptance brains. So you are obviously going to be more offended by it than mostly anybody else on the planet. So obviously, like, you're the exception in this scenario. Like, I'm, I'm, I just wish that these people would be fully aware that most people are not thinking like this. So when you say stuff like that, most people can't relate because it's such an extreme way of viewing the world, right? If you're sitting there and you're viewing somebody walking up to you and critiquing, like, your food and saying something, like, genuine, like, genuine or ge very general... Uh, most people would look at that and go, oh, yeah, me too, yeah, whatever, or, like, they'll just pass it by, whatever. But for you, it's obviously a big deal. Most people have no idea how that works because it's, like, that is such a far-fetched idea. That's why I always say, like, ground it out with an example, explain why that's a big deal, and that way at least you can, like, have people understand where you're coming from instead of just going genuine, or not genuine, sorry, general here, and not really explaining anything. She's kind in her tone. I think she thought that was the way to relate to us. And it asks us to co-sign a message. And I do think as fat women, we get that all the time. We're putting ourselves out there, right? To show people that there's a different way, right? Mm. To show people that like, you don't have to hate yourself. That you can live your life. You can live your life. And you know what? You don't have to hate yourself too. I don't know why people, like you need to listen to a podcast to like have a co-sign that you can totally live your life and be happy and stuff like that. I think it's weird that some people can literally watch one podcast and feel completely different about how they view the world. And I think it's really terrible actually, because that just tells me that you're an easily manipulated person. And you know what? It's okay for a lot of people to adopt new mentalities and new ways of thinking. Um, but the issue arises when, if you're just adopting them off of a whim, just like that, like you watch the podcast, you watch the 30 seconds uh, video, or you watch even a 10 minute video, and then now suddenly you completely redefine the way you think about the world or how you think about this particular aspect off of one video. That's terrible, dude. I think that because like oftentimes what happens in those situations is that if you do watch a video where somebody says it's fine to live your life as a fat person or whatever, um, and you suddenly go, even though I was having all these problems with my health, even though that these things were genuinely negatively affecting me in a very tremendous way, the lady on the internet from the Fab Fatties podcast told me that I can live a happy life even though I'm 450 and I struggle to breathe walking up four steps. All you're doing is telling that person that they're just, oh, no, no, you're fine. It's great to be that size. Don't worry. Even though you're having problems, don't worry about those problems. They don't matter. Live your life. Hashtag slay queen edges. Gut it up and beautiful or whatever, dude. Suited and booted. That is not a good, that's not good. Um, and also, I think, I think people should spend more time thinking about stuff. Because it's too easy for people to just espouse uh, beliefs on the internet and not actually know why they're saying it. Because if anybody challenges you on it, it's almost like done. It's like you'll never understand ever uh, how how grounded your beliefs are unless somebody challenges you on them. Because if you're just thinking like, <laughs> like I saw the interview or I saw the debate between um, Moist Critical and Sneeko. And the debate was between whether or not somebody uh, could consent to sex at the age of like 13 or 10 or something like that. And obviously, that's not, a good, uh, you know, it's crazy as fuck that we even, you would even have a day, but debate like that. But uh, Moist Critical lost, and he was debating on the side of 18 or plus. But the reason why he lost is because he was a pleb when it came to, like, the way he thought about why 18 should be a thing. His idea of it was, I think people that are 18 should have sex or should be considered adults and have sex with other people. 
everybody agrees with that so therefore you never had to think about it but obviously the guy that thought 13 should be the age that you can consent to sex oh, you know crazy um he's thought about it a little bit more or he's done more research than you so a lot of people just think oh i'm, I'm debating like a guy on the age of consent being 13 like i'm gonna fucking steamroll this dude not necessarily especially if that guy's actually done more research than you you've never thought about this ever in your entire life it's the same thing here like you should probably do research or at least think about it like sit down and you know really test your mind or talk to somebody about your beliefs to see if actually what you're saying is truthful or at least cohesive enough to have a conversation because a lot of times people will just say very very disgusting shit and then when somebody goes wait a minute that doesn't make sense and you just crumble like a pile of croutons because you never thought about it but you don't have to apologize for the amount of space that you take at what it just depends dude like if you're on a train system dude and you're taking up two seats and you're fucking like do we use that do we do do we use that same ideology when we park cars when you're taking up two or three spots dude? do we use that same ideology there no of course we don't no there is times to apologize for taking up more space than you need okay obvious fucking lee and the same thing could be said for your body size dude yes there are going to be times and scenarios where if you're sitting down in a space and there needs to be somebody else that needs to take up that space too like an elderly person and you're sitting there taking two spots because you're big you're you're voluptuous you got the bigness and that old grandma is looking at you like this, you know, like, can I, can you get up? But you physically can't get up, dude. You, you just sat down. That's a good 45 seconds of you standing, sitting down before you can get back up. You know what I'm saying? You need to buffer those knees. So, uh, yeah, there is going to be times, 100%, there's going to be times where there are going to be moments that people are going to judge you for the space that you take up. And it's probably not good. Ever, right? And there's these people, you don't have to apologize for the amount of space that you take up. What? I just wish they would invite me on these podcasts, bro. Like, pfft, I'll fly myself out, bro. I'll come over to wherever this is, dude. We'll talk about it. Trust. Ever, right? And there's these people out there that literally are like, well, you put it out there, so you're asking for it. It just depends on what you mean by asking for it. Like, a lot of people have the mentality of wear whatever you want to wear. You can 100% wear whatever you want to wear, but you can't expect other people to have non-reactions to that right like it's obvious like you can go outside if you want to and wear a bikini and bra and you're gonna get a lot of looks for that you can't be upset by that it'd be the same thing if i went outside my bra and panties you don't think i'm gonna get looks for that naturally it's gonna be weird same thing with me having a mustache when i have my mustache curled i get a lot of looks i get a lot of people that look at me and they think it's weird or cool or whatever the fuck but the point i'm making is um, you can do whatever you want, but don't be surprised when somebody calls you out on it or somebody talks to you in a derogatory way or at least like get more looks than you thought. Like for some reason, people will do very, very extreme things and then somebody will go, whoa, wait a minute, that's crazy. And then you go, what? Why are you saying that? Why would you think this is wrong? Like what? I, I can dress up like a Swedish meatball outside and you think it's wrong? Why would that be wrong? What are you talking about? Bro, shut up. Come on. You know what the fucking issue is, bro. You can wear whatever you want, but don't don't be surprised that people are going to say some shit about you. Literally are like, well, you put it out there, so you're asking for it. You're to asking to be bullied. No, I'm not. It's not asking to be bullied, but there's going to be critiques, right? Naturally, if you put videos out on the internet and you tell people it's okay to be fat and it's beautiful and it's amazing, you don't need to change for anybody or all this other bullshit, you obviously are going to have some type of pushback against that. And if you consider that to be bullying, that's okay. That's fine. You can consider that to be bullying. Again, it's like how you use your language. It kind of seems like it's just blurred at this point. But most people wouldn't consider somebody critiquing you or whatever. Like, I don't know if you would consider this video that I'm doing upon you would be bullying. I don't think so. I think it's just me critiquing the fact that most of the words that you're saying or the words that are, that are coming out of your mouth, the sentences that you're stringing together are very well worded. I'll give you that. Great grammar. Uh, but it's also a problem of the cohesiveness of the sentence. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't track onto reality. You're just saying basic hogwash shit right now, and you're expecting people to just believe you because you're saying it in a nice way, which I'm, I don't give a fuck about. Like, you can totally say things in a nice way and have those words be absolutely disgusting, deplorable words, which is exactly what you're doing. So, you know, hey, it is what it is, bro. If you consider that to be bullying, though, you can you feel free to consider it bullying. But if you say anything... <laughs> If you dare say anything about being bullied, about being attacked, about if you stand up for yourself at all, or you're just an angry fat girl. Well, I would need to know the con. I would just, I'm sorry, dude. I would just need to know the context, bro. If you make a video, which is where I'm thinking here, if you make a video on the internet and it's crazy and it's like, whoa, what the fuck are you talking about? And then somebody calls you out on that and then you make a rebuttal to that reaction. 
and it's correct, I don't think anybody would, like, if the majority of the people see that, most people are level-headed. Most people are not going off the deep end and believing somebody saying some crazy ass shit. Most people believe exactly what you believe, just to, based off different sensitivities, right? And, I, like, I agree uh, that the, me and this person probably agree on, like, 99% of things. It's just, like, the sensitivities on whether or not, like, we agree on the heavier stuff. But... Uh, if you make a video, dude, and you say crazy shit, and then you try to defend yourself on that crazy shit, and then you say even more crazier shit, and then you go, I just don't understand why I'm getting this pushback. A lot of people, for some reason, uh, just don't understand that they are the makers of their own demise, or like they are the reason to which they are suffering, and they'll do some crazy shit and not acknowledge that it was crazy shit, because they're stuck in their ideology, and they think that this is how everybody thinks, when in reality, nobody thinks like that, and it's just a crazy way of, like, viewing the world, so you can think this way, I would just need to know an example to which you were able to say something, and somebody said something back to you, and then when you try to stick up for yourself, it was crazy, I would need to know an example. You come off too strong. Well, that's, like, your whole identity, so shouldn't you be fine with it? You're asking for it. It just, yeah, it just depends. It's not the same thing. No, it's not the same thing. You can call me fat all you want. I don't, I don't give a shit. Call me fat. <laughs> I call myself fat, right? But telling me that I don't deserve to be here Ooh. and telling me, oh, you look great, but you're going to die before you hit 50. And then Who's telling you that, though? Is it, is it just comments? If it's just comments, like, whatever, dude. Like, that's, that's completely fine. I've had people literally try to brainwash me into being gay. Like, I've had literal people hit me up on Instagram going, like, bro, you're gay. And I go, no, nah, I'm, I'm really not gay. I'm totally, like, I love female anatomy. And they go, you're gay. It's just what it is. Uh, you love penis. You'll always love penis. you just in your mouth all day, every day. Like, people will say harsh, disgusting shit to you. And that's all right. It is what it is. People will just, that's just how it is. People are just bad people, which is fine. Um, it's important to understand that some people have a little bit more value on the things that they say compared to other people. Because sometimes people are just saying things just to be mean. And other people are saying things to be nice about it or at least try to help you. And it's really important to be able to discern who is what and what is doing what. Because if you're just sitting here putting everybody in the same basket of deplorable activities because you can't discern which person is what person and what words are better said in different sentences or whatever, you're just going to throw everybody under the bus, which is exactly what this person is doing. So Deserve to be here and telling me, oh, you look great, but you're going to die before you hit 50 and then calling it concern. And me telling you that you're a dick for it. <laughs> But I'm the bitch. I have a problem with that. Oh, well, you got to dish it out the same way you take it in, right? If somebody says you're going to die before 50 and your reply is you're a dick, that's okay. I, I don't care. If somebody hit me with that, I think that's a really, uh, damn, she wide, bro. She real wide in the face, bro. I think that that's fine. You can go ahead and say that. It's a little bit weird. Um, it's not exactly the comeback I would have expected. I just hope that if you're going to have a comeback, you need to at least make it make it a little bit creative, right? Make it a little bit creative. Say, like, I'm a Middle Eastern man's meat or something like that. A, uh, a hairy man, a hairy, musty Middle Eastern man meat. Call me that. I would be way more offended than you saying I'm a dick. Put some value into those sentences, right? But if you're sitting here and you're saying that stuff, um, you know that what you're saying that is extreme right like you're you're acknowledging it like you're acknowledging that the statements that you say as a rebuttal to that are also like you think that that's a equal line of <laughs> you think it's like a the mirror force that's gonna like push it back no it's not i mean that just shows me that you know that your just statements are crazy i have this rage right now that is just like it it's the injustice of it it's the injustice of like i just really wish that if they were on podcast together there would be some level-headed person that's just not yes queening you throughout the entire podcast like i just wish there was somebody here going wait a minute hold on what the fuck did you just say like that's kind of crazy can we at least think about that a little bit like even if there wasn't somebody extreme on the side just like well i think we got to take a step back let's see if we can actually put this in some context and see what we're talking about exactly like there's no pushback just a podcast of women just talking about I don't even know, like hogwash, and like people are just yes queening you consistently. It's not growing. I mean, you're growing, but you're not growing. No, we're not asking for it. Well, it just depends on what you mean by asking for it, bro. You're not directly asking for it, but if you're putting yourself in a position to be critiqued on the internet and you're going, but I don't want mean comments. What the fuck are you doing on the internet then? Like, what are you doing right now, bro? How the fuck can you say I didn't ask for this while you publish 80 videos a week? I don't know what to fucking tell you, bro. You're putting yourself in a position to be critiqued and you don't want to be critiqued. Get off the internet. That's like literally going, I don't want to burn my hand and just putting your hand on the cast iron skillet repeatedly. Why are you doing it then? Why are you putting yourself in a position to get burned if you don't want to be burned, bro? We're not asking for it. And just because we don't want to take your shitty words doesn't 
make us bad people. It doesn't make us bad people. It doesn't. It just makes you intolerant. It makes you dumb. It makes you like, you're, you're what you're saying is not necessarily a bad thing. If you were like, if you want to live a normal life and you want to just like, I don't know, dude. Um, you know, just work a regular job, take care of your family and things like that. That's fine. You can go ahead and do that. I'm sure like most people would have no problem like critiquing you. Nobody would critique you. But if you're gonna go on the internet and you're gonna be on TikTok or you're gonna go on all these platforms where you're gonna broadcast yourself to millions of people naturally people are going to say something to you you're in a very extreme situation it's not it's not normal you do understand that like posting these videos on the internet is not normal so naturally you're not going to get normal responses you're going to get extreme responses and uh uh am i saying it's justified yeah to be honest dude you can't make shit like this on the internet and think that it's not going to be pushback people are entitled to make reactions people aren't idle to have responses to things you put out on the internet it's obvious bro like you can't be surprised by this shit. it's actually so dumb i don't know if this woman has never been on the internet before but i've been around since the old call of duty days bro call of duty 4 black ops 2 uh and having to battle people on whether or not your mom was sucking off a 12 year old bro like that was a that was a common thing every single day somebody would come in and be like you know, like, oh, your mom is sucking me off right now. And then you'd have to battle them for 45 minutes. And whoever won uh, got the moral high ground on that shit. Like, no, my mom's a virgin. My mom would never suck on you. You're, you got a small meat. So what the fuck? You know, like, you just got, it's a consistent thing. So I've been through the ringer when it comes to that. And also, like, meeting the amount of women on the internet that I've met that have just all been men. It's, you know, I've been through it. I've been through the ringer. I've seen it. So maybe this woman or, like, the people around her haven't had the same experience as me or some other people. Um, but... It's very obvious that the way she talks about this is that she's very ignorant and she doesn't understand that this shit is uh, normal. It doesn't make us weak. It doesn't make us. It does. Well, it just it, it does make you weak, it especially makes you weak if you're going to do the thing and then be surprised that there's going to be uh, a pushback. It, it, it just means that, well, no, you're weak. Yeah, you're real weak. No, no definitely weak because you're complaining about it, dude. It, you can complain about it. But this way of complaining about it is like, I just don't want it to happen. I just think that it shouldn't happen. I just think I just don't think it should transpire. Like, I didn't do anything. I just don't deserve this. Dude, you're saying some crazy shit. Make us bad people. It doesn't make us bad people. It doesn't- Definitely not bad people, but you're projecting here. Nobody said you were a bad person for like feeling bad about comments on the internet. Make us weak. It doesn't make us anything other than like- Not your doormat? <laughs> not your doormat. Not, I'm not here for whatever issues you need to work out within your- If you're posting videos on the internet, okay? And you're upset that the responses are not what you want them to be and you count that as like being a doormat, dude, get off the fucking internet, okay? You're in the same boat as like Marissa Matthews at this point. Why are you putting yourself in positions to where you're going to be abused on the internet? Stop it, dude. It's literally up to you. Yourself. And so wh like whatever issues you need to work out within yourself. She should also be looking in the mirror too. And so wh like, you it sounds like you need to go to therapy and get off my fucking page. I just wish any of these people would look in the mirror when they say any of this stuff, dude. They are literally the embodiment of what they're talking about. I mean, really think about the situation we're in right now. You're posting stuff on the internet that a lot of people or the majority of people would consider to be extreme. You're getting pushback based off of that content that you're putting on the internet. You don't like the comments that you're getting as a response to that. And then your response to that is go to therapy. So four things are occurring. And for some reason, you're not deeming the first thing, which is you putting out the content on the internet as all the other things. Those are... The, the reason why all this is transpiring is because you put out that stuff. And by the way, the response to what you put out is equal comp or lesser than, to be honest, because you were the initiator compared to all the other things occurring. The, all this stuff couldn't happen without you. So the response to what you're doing, because like, let's look at it like this. You're free to put out the content that you want to be putting out. And then you're deeming that the people putting out the content about what you put your content about are less worthy compared to you. So... Your logic is fucked. Your logic makes no sense, especially if you're going to sit there and piss on people and tell them you should just go to therapy. Like you're just, you know, like you're just a, you know, mentally disabled person. You're just this really, really bad mentally, you know, deemed person. You are that person. You are literally quite literally calling yourself that person. You do understand that, right? Like make no mistake about it. When you tell that person to go to therapy because they're giving you pushback off your beliefs and you don't think you should go to therapy based off the things that you say that are on your beliefs. Okay. All right. Yeah. You're fucking stupid. You're fucking dumb. <laughs> like, number one. But number and nobody says anything. Like, she just said some straight up stupid shit. And nobody was like, <laughs> whoa, hold up now. I get, like, we're your friends. Is nobody else going to, like, well, there's three, what, there's three, what, you're not going to say anything about that?
how the fuck did you even say that like what did you not like register any of the words you just said and how uncohesive they are and actually how hypocritical they were literally like you're doing the exact thing that you're telling people to not do okay for two just because i'm here and i have a message for people like me this is not your playground oh it's so dumb oh, oh! If you post something publicly to the internet and you are upset that you're not attracting the demographic that you wish to attract, why would then I don't know what to fucking tell you, bro. I don't know. Like go to the fucking deli and just hope there's a whole bunch of fat women there that you can preach to instead of the entire internet. What do you want from me, bro? Like how, how am I supposed to, how you, what you want is so unbelievably unrealistic, so unbelievably nonsensical. It doesn't even make sense in, 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 in this statement. It, it, the, the idea of your statement makes no sense. You, you want people to listen to what you're saying that are not the people that you want to listen to your stuff, which is all fat people, which is dumb, by the way, because you could reach way more people if you're actually going, I want everybody to listen to my message. That'd be like me going, no, I, I'm going to start up a mustache gang and I only want people with mustaches. No beards, no extra facial hair. You got to be just mustache. I'm taking everybody. I'm taking the, the guys with the handlebars. I'm taking the guys with the full beards. I'm taking the Wolverine dudes that got a little bit of something on the side. I'm even taking the Latinas that got a little bit of extra on the side, a little bit of peach fuzz on the top i'll take them all dude every single one of them you know why because i want my message to reach as many people as possible instead of going i just want fat girls to watch this i just want fat girls to see my videos okay but that's not gonna happen so that's you know you saying that is irrelevant i don't give a fuck and then also you sitting there trying to tell me that i'm a bad person for watching your shit and going what the fuck none of this makes sense and i have a response to it is dumb is dumb because you are literally doing these people are just hypocrites, bro. It's crazy, bro. I just wish there was somebody here that could just put these people in their place because this is, uh, oh, this is actually insanity. I have a message for people like me. This is not your playground to just unload your trauma. And this is not your playground to unload your trauma. You see how easy it was to push back on that so easily? Like, so you're telling me the people commenting in your videos that are unloading their trauma that have, may have valid criticisms but you don't see you uploading the video as unloading your trauma. Okay. Okay. Yep. Definitely rules for thee, but not for me. Absolutely. Allison, what, what is body image therapy at its core? Bullshit. <laughs> I, I, I've never, bro, why don't we just have random adjectives like prefixes in front of things? body image therapy what the fuck is that dude i guess maybe if you have like a you you see yourself as a lot bigger than you actually are maybe but like i'm pretty sure that's not what they're gonna be talking about so sure i think it's really about digging deeper into like beliefs that you have received about your body whether that's good bad right wrong and a lot of times i see that like categorized and how does that impact like the way that i interact with myself and how does it impact how I interact with the people around me, but also like the world around me. That's, I don't even understand what you just said. Like none of that shit actually meant anything at all. So body image therapy is going through things that might or might not negatively affect you and looking at how that can affect you. Okay. That's all right. Very non-descriptive. And see, this is how they get you, bro. Like, you know, like, oh, why do I, sh why should I go to body image therapy? Just say a whole bunch of words. It works, bro. Do I connect that to like my self-worth or my self-esteem and, you can know. You, can I get an example? What do I do with that when it's negatively impacting every area of my life? So getting to the core of that and then doing a lot, a lot of practice and unlearning and I think relearning about how to like take care of your body. And guess what? Okay, uh, none of it. I just, I'm sorry, none of that made any sense at all. I don't even understand what the fuck she was even talking about, dude. I thought it was talking about things that are said about your body or things that have been done to your body in a negative or positive way and seeing how that affects you in your day-to-day -day life. And then you went off and said something like, it could be negatively affecting your, it negatively affects you across every realm of your body. What the fuck are you Somebody help me out, dude. Somebody help me out in the comment section. I that, that shit was... I don't know. That shit made no sense to me. I, I'm literally flabbergasted at the amount of words she used and literally said nothing. And I think relearning about... How and to top it off, like, I really don't like it when these people talk uh, in general, but when they say... They have to elongate so many words, dude. Like, they use so many extra syllables or have the syllable be outlined so... And have to 
talk and, you know, really navigate the world. Bro, just, can you, I get it. It's the way you talk. It's the dialect that you picked up because that's where you're from and the people around you and things such and so forth. You need to, can you just permanently have your voice on 1.25 speed? How to like take care of your body. And guess what? Like, again, I don't know why I'm like thinking of the naysayers because I hate whenever their voice is in my head, but like everybody has health stuff. Mm -hmm. No body, no physical body gets away from health stuff. Yeah. Our health stuff is not an outcome of being fat or a punishment for being fat. Pe people tend to, people tend to lump everybody together to try to forgive their mistakes, to try to make it seem like it's not as bad as it actually is. And I used to do this when I was a kid in school because I never did my homework and I would just presume that, well, even though I didn't do my homework, there has to be multiple somebodies also within this class that also don't do their homework. And the also, the bigger scheme of that is, I'm sure there is somebody in the world that has also not done their homework. Therefore, you can just unlimitedly forgive yourself, right? Or it's like somebody going, I'm going to buy this, but I would have bought it anyway because, you know, I probably needed it at some point, even though you never needed it. You're going to find an excuse. You're going to find one. So if you need an excuse, you're going to find one. Just keep it a buck with me, bro. Your health is bad because you're fat. And I understand that you want to bring in thin people or you want to bring in, like, it's, it's such a cop to say, Yes, I have health problems. And yes, most of my health problems are probably attributed to me being fat. But guess what? Everybody has health problems. So like, what's the big deal? That's a very dumb and disingenuous way because you're only really negatively affecting your health. And I guess people that are watching you too, because a lot of people will just forgive their bad behaviors because everybody has health problems, right? Everybody is having problems with their health. Therefore, mine's like, what? Like, what's wrong with that? It's a dumb way of looking at anything in life. You're never going to get anything done if you're just going to keep forgiving your shit because everybody has this problem too. Sure, everybody has this problem, but it's like really important to understand like what are the averages? Like, Are you going to tell me that if you're fat, you're not going to be suffering from a tremendously a large amount more conditions due to that fatness compared to somebody that's not fat? Obvious fucking lee. Somebody with no legs is going to suffer from not walking syndrome way more compared to a guy with legs. But guess what? The guy with legs probably suffers from that same no walking syndrome. Just like 1% of the time or something when he's like laying down. You know what I'm saying? Like it's such a dumb way of looking at anything at all. Like it, 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 it's, it's like it's just dumb, bro. It's just stupid. If you think like that, you go to therapy. <laughs> Why is it always you go to therapy, bro? You just said some straight up stupid shit. And every time you say this, sh you, you always like, you always reinforce it with a go to, th if you think like this then reinforce it, like, oh, go to therapy. Do what you said was dumb. I don't need to go to therapy for thinking in the correct way. I you, it was so easy for me to dismantle your last statement. And yet you still say, go to therapy. Oh. Yeah, I just don't think that even therapy is really even that good for a lot of people, dude. Some people actually go to therapy for the wrong reasons. And there's not all therapists are created equal, by the way. If you go to some therapist, they might just want to fuck up your life, dude. Or they might just want to, like, say some shit that might not be really efficient. Not all, not all therapists are created equal. So, like, if you ever do go to therapy, I would hope that whatever therapist you go to is an optimal therapist for you. And you're going to one that is going to cater to you and also shop around. It's okay to just... Go to three, four, five therapists, dude. That first one is probably not going to be the right one anyway. Of being fat or a punishment for being fat. Okay. If you think like that, you go to therapy. Okay. <laughs> um, it's not even funny either. Like, she didn't say anything too crazy. I don't know why we're all laughing at that shit. It's like she killed it or something. She didn't really, like, that shit was, like, so fucking, go to therapy. <laughs> like, okay, you guys are fucking great. Yeah. Hell. <laughs> 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 Jesus, bro, fucking <laughs> Disney fucking evil villain laugh dude what the fuck was that shit <laughs> man dark <laughs> Ellie's evil laugh today she feels dude I, I doubt there's any air left in this room like you go back in this fucking room dude you're gonna fall on the floor and just <gasps> like fucking Patrick when he was in when he was in Sandy's dome bro and there was no water the fact that Ellie's in like best friend like we're just chilling we're vibing this is when her psychotic stuff really comes out she's like you wanna know my true evil but it wasn't even really psychotic she just told somebody she just told us to go to therapy I don't know like you guys are really like Damn, you guys are really fucking, you guys are so, you guys are so based. Oh, man. You know what? Yeah, you guys, no, you're right. She's so based for saying that, dude. It was like, it was like the most based statement I've ever heard in my life, dude. Go to therapy. Whew, dude, that really killed. That fucking killed, bro. What's the next statement, dude? Uh, fucking clip your toenails. Oh, shit. Oh, man. What's the next statement, dude? Work on yourself. Ah, oh, shit, dude. I'm fucking totally killing it.
thoughts and desires. <laughs> Burn <Both things. laughs> Un Unfiltered and unhinged. And when the people I'm having to engage with have that narrow view of fatness that you're going to die at 50. I'm and sure there are nuances to fatness, I'm sure. Like, there are plenty of nuances to fatness. But you're, you're looking at it too nuanced, okay? Like... Where it should be like this, you're viewing it like this. Like you're trying to include things that are not even remotely close to, into in that same category. And I know why you're doing it because you don't want to accept the truth of what it is. And you're trying to like make it bigger than it actually is to try to make it seem like your problem isn't, isn't a problem. And that's fine. You can do that. I'm all for you dismissing your own health, your own negative health. It's free world. You know what I'm talking about? We live in America, so I'm sure that you have the right to do that. But I would just hope that you make the proper decision for your own sake and stop spewing this false rhetoric on the internet, dude. You're literally saying some straight up terrible, disgusting shit. Thank God I'm here to dismiss it, though. Have that narrow view of fatness. That By the way, um, it's also really fucked up to say, like, I have a narrow view of the fatness. You're, you're basically dismissing me for thinking correct but anyway you're gonna die at 50 and they look at me with pity with you're not living a life well deserved you're making poor choices and you're going to waste your years and you don't deserve to be living the life that you're living no it's nobody's saying that do the way I like to look at it, bro, these people always go off way too hard than they, like, nobody's thinking that shit. When somebody sees that you're fat and they're seeing that you're having problems, it's not that we think, it's not that we don't think, okay, it's not that we think you don't deserve to live or live a, a good life. It's just that you're living a life on hard mode, okay? Like, your life is perpetually ass and it gets progressively ass-er every single day because you're fatter. You don't get younger, so the your performance of your body is going to diminish over time, naturally. So you're literally taking years and if you don't want to look at years you're definitely taking off mobility you're definitely taking off health off your lifespan for no other reason than just being bigger and eating more and if you're okay with that that's fine but most people are going to look at that and go why would you choose to live a life on hard mode when you can literally not and it would be you could do all the things you're doing now and more and you would be able to do the things you're doing now more efficiently uh, but you're not doing it because you just think that being fat and you're stuck in your ways and somehow you've managed to convince yourself that being fat is still a worth a life of living apparently like it's like you're fine like go ahead live your life but dude like can we acknowledge that you're gonna have a lot of problems you know what I'm talking about it's like going and buying a car and like all you need to do is just commute back and forth to work so instead of like buying a I don't know like a 2020 Toyota Corolla you instead go and buy like a fucking semi truck and you think that that's gonna be more efficient to drive than a a car like it's fine if you want to do that i'm sure that you can get you can definitely do it in both of those things but some part of me thinks that the corolla might actually be the better car you know what i'm saying it's literally just like that you're choosing to just do it harder and you're choosing to just have and make no mistake about it the way they're looking at it would be the equivalent of they didn't have a choice they have to buy the the 16 wheeler they got to buy that fucking semi truck but the reality of the situation is their tunnel vision so extreme that they don't even realize that the Corolla was literally two inches away from the semi truck and it was cheaper and it had better gas mileage and you could fit the whole family in there. But she didn't see that. She just saw the truck and that's all. She, and now she's just trying to defend it. That's basically her life right now. That affects me because guess what? They do treat me differently. Yeah, no shit, dude. I just wish somebody on this fucking panel would say something, dude. Come on than people who don't view fat bodies that way. And so, no. It, uh, people view me differently compared to how other people view other people. Is uh, the, Okay. <sighs> My fatness doesn't get to not mean anything. In fact, you saying that... Yeah, you know what? Okay, bro. It's uh, These women are on some different shit, bro. These, I'm sorry, dude. This is, actually, <laughs> this is actually agonizing, bro. I don't know if somebody on this panel... Do, is are they all like sniffing copium to the next degree is like the oxygen capacity in this room so diminished that their brains can no longer think efficiently like like they're just they're just so fucking oxygen deprived because everybody here sucks up like an additional 50 percent oxygen in the room dude it's like a fucking bugatti stuck in your garage and it sucks up all the air it's like a vacuum in here what is what is going on dude what do you really three women are sharing like two brain cells and so no my fatness doesn't get to not mean anything. No shit. In fact, you saying that means my fatness means a whole of a hell lot. Yeah, yeah, because it does. I don't, like, I don't know why you think it wouldn't. Like, that's such a fucking yes, of course. Uh, most things mean something. You know, and so it, it really, 
is hard because I do feel like sometimes people want us to shut up about being fat. Yeah. <laughs> Guess what? We can't. No, go ahead. Keep. I, I think it's great, dude. I think it's awesome. Keep talking about it, dude. It's fucking entertaining as hell to watch you people talk about your fatness as if it's my problem, dude. It's great. It's honestly great, dude. Keep keep not taking accountability. It makes for great content. You guys smell great today, by the way. I love you guys. Guess what? We won't. Keep because fatness it. affects our entire lives. True. Uh, but you know what? Like, It's great that it affects all your lives, and somehow you don't realize that you can just lose weight, and it wouldn't affect your lives. But all right, you know, go off, queen. So we can't. Guess what? We won't. Because fatness affects... And she thinks she killed here, too, bro. She really thought she slayed here. Like, she really thought she ate. Like, this was, like, her fucking killing blow. This was her critical hit right here, dude. This was... <laughs> this is the one that took down the boss, bro. This is one she thought really, really did the damage. Nope, it didn't. This shit literally was meaningless. Like, you literally were playing a game, and you hit, you, you hit the button to do the attack, and it said miss. <laughs> Our entire lives. You're new to this, okay? Mm -hmm. And, like, you're diving it in, eyes wide open, wanting to understand. Mm-hmm. All right. It is very different than... A, what, what are we diving into right now? The buffet, dude? What, what are we diving into? In eyes wide open, wanting to understand. Mm -hmm. All right. It is very different than a, being in the plus size community. Actively having been in it, maybe making money doing fashion content for years, mm -hmm. and, and never learning the larger end of the spectrum of what's happening, or never joining in on them, or never... Do you follow them? Do you follow people bigger than you? I don't know what you mean by bigger, dude. Like, there's a, probably a few guys that I know that are a little bit bigger than me. Yeah, probably. You mean, like, fat, though? Probably not. I don't I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I'm sure there are some guys that I know that are fat, I guess. What does that matter, though? Like, you're conflating people that are bigger than me are somehow going to have some more intrinsic knowledge compared to me, even though that's not how that fucking works. Like, do you think that black people know more about, like, I don't know, melanin capacity? Like, what do you, like, you understand what I'm talking about? Like, just because you're a, like, for instance, if I'm a man, that doesn't mean I don't know shit about women. You know, I can still have, like, a pretty good idea of how women, you know, the, the female anatomy works to, just because I'm not a man. Uh, just because I'm a man doesn't mean I don't have a critical thinking process. Like, make no mistake about it. I do think that fat people probably have an experience or two or many experiences living in that fat body that I don't have naturally. But that doesn't mean I can't relate, and that doesn't mean that I'm not capable of understanding, and that doesn't also mean that I can't compile evidence or facts or even evidence or, or like, any of that stuff to also try to, like, have these same types of understanding for these experiences. And make no mistake about it as well, these people are not talking about just fat people that are, like, you or me or whatever. Like, most fat people understand that being fat is not good. They're talking about the fat people that believe that being fat is good. So even in this statement, she's not even abiding by her own rules. Like, she's very particularly talking about a fat person that believes that being fat is okay. That's the fat person she's talking about. She's not talking about fat people in general because that wouldn't even make sense because most fat people will tell you, yeah, bro, I'm fat as hell. My nutsack, I don't even see it anymore. Haven't fucked a girl in three months times four years. And also, I smell like perpetual hot pockets. That's, that's most people. Like, most people will tell you that. And that's okay. That's, you know, if you want to live a life like that, it's fine. But they're definitely not the people that are going, that is great. That is amazing. Or never. Do you follow them? Do you follow people bigger than you? No. Oh, I do. Do you follow people bigger than you? Do you follow people? I'm so sorry. Why is that? What is this like? What are we doing right now, dude? Like, you guys, you guys really missed the mark so fucking hard. She didn't say anything that was like impact. I don't. What is going on, dude? What is this like your Rosa Parks moment, dude? Like you're not gonna get up out of your seat, but you just can't because you literally physically can't. Like, what are we doing right now, bro? What? Why? Why do you guys think these slogans are gonna hit? They're not. Them shits is weak. Sorry. Do you follow people who have different lived experiences than you? Everybody has lived different experiences than me, bro. Literally every single fucking person, dude. It's like. What is this, bro? You're saying some really basic bitch shit right now, dude. No, everybody lives different lives, dude. Every fat person is not living the same life. Not every fucking black person is living the same life. Not every woman has the same experiences, dude. Like, it's gonna be different from person to person. There might be some shared stuff. Sure, I'm not saying there isn't crossover. But, dude, people are fucking different, bro. Do you follow people who are not living in the same body as you and and have different perspectives and different access are you are you following anybody that has different perspectives are you following anybody that can, has lived a different life than you have you talked to any of these people have you had a dialogue with any of these people like i would love to know that because you're so quick to tell me that i 
haven't had any of these experiences. I, but I challenge these people every single fucking day. Make no mistake about it. Look at my Instagram DMs are just filled up with, do you want to have a conversation? Do you want to talk about this? I'm open to talking about literally anything with you. These people don't reply because they know they can't. Because if they do, they're going to lose so fucking hard it's because their beliefs are literally centered in things that they never talk about and they never they're never challenged on it so when they do talk about it they collapse so no you don't do that either and don't act like you have some type of moral high ground because you're in a fatter body and you somehow understand more than everybody else when that's not the fucking case bro you don't understand anything more than everybody else especially being in that room with no oxygen and need your eyes on their work do you why do they need my eyes on their work dude what is their work exactly like taking 45 minutes to put on a shirt what do you what do, what am i supposed to do what do you want me to do tell me what you want me to do bro tell me what you want me to do can i talk can we have a conversation bro fat ladies uh the fat fab fatties or whatever the fat feb fatties dude I, let me get on the podcast bro let's do it i zoom whatever you want bro let's do it question of the day we have to talk about this spectrum in both looking at it as ways that people truly identify themselves, right? Mm -hmm. They have found identity in their fat bodies and which, they which is terrible. Like it's okay to it's okay to have identification in things that you don't like, okay. I've talked to some people before that have said, if you ask them, who are you? They'll go, Yeah man, I'm black, I'm black, right? Or it I've heard I'm fat or I've heard I'm a woman. And I always go, but aren't you your name? Like, aren't you Joseph? Aren't you Caitlin? Aren't you this? Like, aren't you you first? And like, all those other things are secondary, third, fourth, fifth. You know what I'm talking about? Like, if you were to ask me, who, who, how do I identify myself? I would go, I'm David. Like, you know, I, I like Yu-Gi-Oh! And I like, uh, uh, I, I like video creation. And I like to cook food sometimes for people. And I like Star Wars and this and that. And then if somebody would ask me, but you're white too. And I'd go, oh yeah, I guess. That, for me, it would be like the 12th or 5th or like, you know what I'm talking about. Like the thing way, 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 way further down. Because I don't put a lot of value in any of that stuff. Because if it's something I can't really control or like, I don't put a lot of value into it, right? It's like, whatever. It's cool that I'm like a dude, I guess. I don't have an egg sack. I don't have to worry about like, um, you know, uterine lining shedding and stuff like that. Or like my, uh, the egg sack attacking me. But um, other than that, like, I don't really think about it. Because like, it's my, you know what I'm talking about? It's not really something I put a lot of value into. It's cool that I'm a dude. It's cool that I have a big meat. It's cool that I'm white. Uh, I don't care, though. Most of that stuff is like passive to me. So it's like, whatever. If you're finding, if you're identifying yourself with something as, 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 um, crazy as being fat, you're taking away your individual. Like you're, 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 you're identifying yourself with a, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a disease. And then it's also a, a descriptive term. Like, what do you, why, why wouldn't you choose to be yourself first? Like you're not a fat person. You're fucking Rachel or Jessica or whatever the fuck her name is. Like, anyway, these people, the, the point I'm making is like, these people are fundamentally thinking about it in a very, very different way. Looking at it as ways that people truly identify themselves, right? Mm -hmm. They have found identity in their fat bodies and they're using these terms in a, a neutral way, right? Mm -hmm. Which can be empowering to say, you know, this is this is the body type that I that I identify with. Obese. The, so I, I'm looking for other bodies like mine Why? so that, you know, I know where you guys are shopping. I know where you're doing this and I know where you're doing that. Crazy. And I know that- Instead of like changing, instead of, oh, so you have a problem and instead of trying to find a solution to the problem, you're just feeding into it. Like, <laughs> it's like, what's her name that was like, yeah, I'm so fat that I can't fit. Jordan Underwood, she was like, I'm so fat that I can't fit in the car anymore. So instead of losing weight, I just went on Amazon to buy a seatbelt extender. Like, you're not actually solving the problem. You're just putting a Band-Aid on it and hoping that it's going to, like, stop the bleeding. It's not. It's going to be bad. It's going to be even worse next month. You know, if I follow this person who has a body like mine, who says that they're a mid-fat, then, you know, they had this great experience at this location. So maybe I'll have a great experience there as well because they have a similar body type to mine, right? Sure. But I also think it's important to acknowledge that this is also a spectrum of privilege and accessibility mm -hmm. as we go up on that on that spectrum the ex the accessibility goes down right so just lose weight and then don't lose any accessibility or privilege right like why wouldn't you just not be in that category bro like okay don't get me wrong if you're already in a class and you can't do anything about it okay but if you're in a class and it's literally malleable and you can like get out of that class and it would literally take effort sure but it would be tremendously beneficial for you and you're just not doing it 
Why are you even bother talking about this? Like, what are you doing right now, bro? It's like, what are you talking about? Why would you? That's like somebody going, yeah, we're in the, we're in the really dehydrated club right now. Like, we just do, we just don't drink water. Yeah, we just don't drink any water at all. And uh, drinking, we just don't have any. Like, we just wouldn't drink it. It's impossible for us to drink water. It is possible for us to drink water, but we're just not drinking water. And it's also, I'm trying to find places where we can go, where we can communicate about our non-water drinking people. Like, that's that's basically what you're doing. Like, you're putting yourself in a position to where you can drink water, but you're choosing not to. And you're bragging about it, too. And you're telling us how, you know, impoverished you are and how terrible and how discriminated against you are. I don't care. Like, I'm going to keep it a buck with you. I just, I'm really just, I just, I, I don't care if you're, if you feel like you're having all these problems when you can literally just not be that in which you have those problems, why should I care? Like, that'd be like me. Okay, look, if a guy had no legs and he was going like, man, it really sucks. I don't have legs because like, I'm constantly discriminated against with stairs. I'd be like, yeah, bro, that sucks, man. Yeah, that sucks. I can agree with that. But when you're fat, uh, okay, like, but, you know, you ever heard of, like, calorie deficit, dude? You ever heard about, like, eating less? Like, I don't know what to fucking tell you, bro. What do you want from me? We go up on that, on that spectrum, the, ex the accessibility goes down, right? The privilege goes down, right? <laughs> yeah. The privilege of taking up space goes down. Yeah, and because it you're not taking up space, though. Like, that's the thing. Like, you get fatter, you take up more space. So the privilege of taking up space is actually not even a privilege that then people enjoy because they're not taking up the space to begin with. They're not physically big enough to take up that space you're talking about. So technically, the space in which you are talking about currently is not even really something that thin people identify with, and it's actually something that you identify with. So through the process of telling us about how thin people can't identify with the fat bodies and the fat perspective, you are actively showing that you cannot identify with the thin bodies perspective as well. So like, whatever, bro. I'm, just, I'm done with dismantling this right. woman. The privilege of taking up space goes down. And it's not, it's not the way that you know we talk about taking up space, but it's the way that the world offers that space that's it guys we're not doing this anymore okay i don't know what to tell you okay i'm done with these fat acceptance podcasts they get co progressively cringier and cringier and bigger and bigger i don't know what's going on anymore dude they have no pushback there's literally the most uh unintelligent people on these podcasts they, there's nobody that actually has a like a everybody just agrees with each other just like yes yes mm-hmm mm -hmm. oh my god you said something so crazy oh my god you said go to therapy oh my god it's it's what is it i don't know man it's boring i don't know what to fucking tell you okay i hope i hope this video is entertaining though um if you enjoyed today's video i'd appreciate for everybody to leave a like comment subscribe sharing the video all those things i'd appreciate tremendously thank you anybody that's already subscribed everybody that's a member you guys are all amazing people i appreciate you tremendously literally i do you guys are the joy of my life thank you so much and uh thank you for taking the commitment to be with me for the rest of your life you smell really good today by the way uh if you watch the video in its entirety Leave it down below by typing in cope because these people are sniffing on it, dude. They're smelling it. They're, oh, they're sniffing up on that, that copium, dude, hard because these people cannot get reality. They just, they never, no reality checks at all, dude. But uh, anyway, um, you're a beautiful person. You smell really great. I really love the fact that you were able to drink that bottle of water today and you had no resistance. It just went smoothly down your mouth because you knew that your body needed it. You knew that when you woke up this morning, you were really dehydrated when you took that pee and it was like yellow. You thought, I need to drink some water. And you did. You took that water, you put it in your mouth and you said, because you knew that you needed it. And that was really impressive, by the way. I love the way your throat was moving when that water went down it. That was great, by the way. That was really, really performative. Can you show me again slower? Anyway, uh, if you want to check out my social media, it'll be linked down below in the description. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Peace.